What is going on fellas? Back again with another video for you guys. Apparently I lost the original intro video, but as the title states, this is the big break upgrade for my TSX CL9. We're going full on Brembo on a budget for sure. Uh, I'll definitely share all the part numbers and everything else like that. But again, like and subscribe if you like videos like this. I appreciate you guys watching. On to the video. All right, so we're gonna go with Stop Tech brake lines. These are TSX brake lines. Here's the part numbers, so you guys can see them. I'll put them in the description as well. So I went with Stop Tech brake lines. I went with uh, pretty much daily driver Centric pads. Centric makes Stop Tech. It's a company of, of Stop Tech, um, or vice versa. So I got these. You done them? Someone has to do it. <laughs> so we went one episode without it. I, dude, even AJ had gotta etiquette. Bring it back. Gotta, let's bring it back. So these are the huge uh, brake pads for those Brembos. I got a rebuild kit also from Centric. And these are the, the Centric, the hub Centric rings that I was talking about that uh, Brian from Fast Brakes provided for these huge uh, rotors. I just went with standard Wagner rotors. These were about 26 bucks a piece. Um, here's the part numbers there. These are about 26 bucks a piece. So these were about, I think $30 or something like that from Brian, you'd have to contact him. This was about 10 bucks, and then these pads were about $35 or something like that, all from Rock Auto. So 30, 40, that's 70, plus 15, that's 85, plus $50, what is that? Can, can you math for me? So that's about a buck 35. So 135 bucks, the lines were another $100, that's 235, and the calipers were 100 bucks each. That's 435. So for 435 bucks, you get a super massive brake upgrade over the stock TSX stuff. So we're gonna take it off. Uh, you guys are gonna be able to see. I'll, I'll show you the difference in the rotor, the size difference. It's, it's huge. It's a huge difference. It's huge. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's keep going, dude. So AJ went ahead and took the caliper off. Of course, the one thing that I already knew is that this dust shield was either gonna be completely removed or we have to go ahead and cut it. So if you zoom in here, Sergio, um, we're gonna have to cut these these lips off right right about here, maybe a little bit more on the bottom and the top, because this brimble's so large that it won't let it line up to the holes. So that's probably like the biggest issue there, but we already knew that, so we expected it. So as you guys can see, this, this point of the dust shield. I'd like to keep the dust shield if possible. So yeah, I'll just cut it here, and that should be more than enough to be able to fit this. I'll cut that there and I'll cut it here as well. Cut it down here, so let's do that. Oh, I wanted to use the jaws of life. <sighs> Look at that. More than I needed, but it ensured that we didn't have to cut so I like to measure none and then cut once. How about that, guys? So now I just want to check. AJ, uh, you got the bolts that, let me, I just want to make sure this hardware works. This is the original hardware that came with the, the stock brakes. So we'll see if that's enough threading to go through these. And it looks like it is not. See how these threads are too short, AJ? HDR run? Actually, I got one up on you. I already ordered the bolts at Hyundai. They're waiting for me. So I ordered original um, Genesis uh, bolts. So we'll see if those bolts actually fit better than these. Um, really, we only need bolts that are about, I would say 15 millimeters longer. Um, I wouldn't run these this way because that, that just wouldn't be safe. So we're just going to go ahead and finish the whole setup. And then what we'll do is we'll run down to the Hyundai dealership and pick up the bolts that I had already ordered that are waiting for me. And then uh, we'll complete this and that'll be that. So let's keep going on that note. Cool. All right. So we had to do the second best thing that we could do here. And what was the second best thing we could do, AJ? Space it out. Oh, man. One thing I don't like to do, but we called Hyundai and unfortunately on a Saturday like today, due to the current COVID situation, 
we couldn't get our bolts, but they're there, they're waiting for me. So we're gonna bolt everything on, but on Monday, I'll go and pick up the actual bolts. And uh, I went to the hardware store. Unfortunately, they didn't have any uh, M12 by 1.25 threaded 30 mil bolts that we would have needed. So that's gonna do for now. So now we have to bleed the brakes. The brakes are on after <laughs> a lot of finagling with it. It was actually quite easy. The hardest part was actually taking off the brake lines and replacing those. So pretty much it's, it's a bolt on affair. But one thing I did want to mention now that we're going to bleed it, uh, I am going to use AT Type 200. Let me show you guys. Again, good stuff. Has something with a high wet boiling point. Good stuff to use. Um, also, there is a brake bleeding procedure. So, ha uh, to the guy who said that it doesn't take any science and said that all cars are bled the same. No, actually the, the Acura Integra. Acura. Woo, I got my Hondas wrong. The Acura TSX has its own bleeding procedure, which is a uh, left front, right front, right rear, and left rear. So that's how we're gonna go ahead and do it. The Brembles do have two bleeder screws, so I'm gonna bleed the inner one and then the outer one uh, when I bleed that one specific corner. We're gonna do it the old foot pedal method. So we're, I'm probably gonna do it like three or four times per per side. I'm gonna do it, uh, I'm gonna do it, uh, yeah, three or four times. We'll cycle it three or four times. And then so after that, We'll probably take it on the road test just to make sure it breaks. We'll see if we can bleed in, uh, not bleed in, but bed in the brake pads. And that'll be it. I'll show you guys what it looks like. Come on, follow me, AJ. Don't mind the mess that we have here, but this is what it looks like. So we went ahead and bled it. We went through the procedure again three times. So we went left front, right front, right rear, left rear, which is what the Acura FSM states. So let's show them what came out of this, AJ. There's the first bleeder and the second bleeder back there. So this is what came out of it. This is all the old fluid. And this is just a bleeder bottle. Um, you can buy these on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for these. These are about 15 or 20 bucks. Uh, pretty cheap, but really good tool. You could use a water bottle with a clear line, that's fine. The clear line really just helps you see the old fluid come out and then see the new fluid go through. So I just kept going until we saw clear fluid all the way around, no air bubbles. So um, yeah, so three times, that was good for us. But again, I don't know how old this was. I don't know how long it's been in there, but it's a good, it's a good practice to replace this or bleed your brakes at least every couple of years. If you track at least every four or five track events, it should it sure is good to do it. So unless you have like really expensive like Castro RBF or something like that. But anyway, that's it. So we're gonna go ahead and put the car on the ground. First, we're gonna make sure the wheel's clear, AJ. Did we even test that? I did. You did? When you were at the store. Oh man. I did. Is that the picture you sent me? Yes, it is. I just wanted to mention Sergio and uh, AJ had a couple issues with um, getting the pads up uh, to line up, but that was quickly figured out um, once they like filed the pads down a little bit. Sometimes you have to the file pads. Is a little too thick. Yeah, so it happens. So let's see. Oh, you know what? Yeah, let me do it. Oh, epic fail. We'll leave it in. So I've been driving on the Red Bull upgrade for about two weeks now. Well, as much as I can, of course, we're trying to quarantine and chill as much as we possibly can, right? Uh, but as I'm driving down the 405 uh, south here, so don't mind some of the bumps. I, I, all I can say is it's a fantastic upgrade. Um, for about $450, which is what I spent on all the, all, well, the complete upgrade, including front rotors, pads, the hub-centric rings from Fast Brakes. Thanks again, Brian, our Fast Brakes stop tech brake lines I mean you can't you can't beat that for 450 uh, I, I can say that I can I noticed that the brake pedal is a lot firmer but that could be all due to just the brake lines alone I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you like videos like this give us a thumbs up like and subscribe we'll definitely uh, appreciate your viewership thanks again guys quarantine and coilovers quarantine and chill off into the next one